Well, good morning, and I hope everyone's had a fantastic week this week. Now, we're obviously back in lockdown, which means travel restrictions have been imposed upon us, which is fair enough. I've got no problems with that. And so I thought I would do this video today just chatting about all different things, really. And it might be quite a long video, this. So you might want to consider just listening to it in the background. And what I'll also do, I'll put a timestamp in the description below with all of the different topics. Now, I have to look over here because I've, I've wrote some of the topics down, otherwise I will forget. But I want to talk about my blood pressure, which is not good. My daily walks and the photographs that I've taken on them. The new gear that I've bought and some of the gear that I've sold to make way for the new gear. Uh, bird food that I've changed over. And I want to touch on the Bird Box webcam that I've currently got and the reason I've not made that video yet, as I said that I would. And lastly, I just want to talk about this um, pergola uh, that I'm currently sitting under here because that is where I first started my wildlife photography from, right here. Right, so let's, let's start off with my blood pressure, which is not good. Um, almost four weeks ago now, three and a half weeks ago now, I started to get pins and needles in my fingers and in my toes. And my calves felt incredibly tight. I don't know if you've ever worn any of them flight socks that come up to your knees that really kind of grip your legs. Uh, it felt like that, that my legs were being... Uh, as I say, gripped. And this went on for a couple of weeks and going on for that long, I knew that it wasn't right. So I rang my doctors uh, on the Monday morning and within an hour, uh, a doctor had called me back and basically I explained over the phone what was going on and she said, come straight up to the surgery, let's check you out. Anyway, I, I saw a nurse when I got there um, lovely guy, mind you, everybody's nice, aren't they? You know, uh, uh, they do a great job. Anyway, took my blood pressure and said, yeah, you've got high blood pressure. So we started talking about my lifestyle and it's not just down to this, I know it's not, but we started to talk about my caffeine intake, which is pretty much off the scale. I will make a cafetiere of coffee as soon as I wake up in the morning which pretty much holds three uh, cups and I would drink that before work. I will then make it again and I will then fill up two of these bottles and I will have them when I'm at work as well. During the day I might have a Diet Coke which has still got caffeine in. Um, I'll get home from work, I'll have a few cups of tea, and this is every day, every week, every month, every year. And so I quit all caffeine there and there on the spot. When I say there and then, I mean it's only been a, a week and a half, but I thought, right, need to do something, and, um, and that was the first thing to go. And I'm really pleased to say that the pins and needles in my fingers and in my toes and that feeling around my leg have gone. Um, I'm still getting the odd tingles, but that's because it's extremely cold uh, at the moment. But, you know, you know your own body and compared to what it was, there's none of that anymore. So I think the caffeine was playing uh, a huge part, not the only issue. Um, obviously, there's a lot of lifestyle choices that I, uh, that I need to change. I need to change my diet. Um, I need to stop drinking as much as I did. I wasn't drinking uh, an awful lot prior to 2020, but I was certainly drinking a lot more in 2020 than I ever have done before. So... I, I could have beers in the fridge for weeks and weeks on end and, and look at them, didn't bother me. And then 2020 came and it was almost like a reward, you know, come home from work and open up a can and 
a few more on a Friday, and uh, you, you know how it is. I ain't got to explain, but yeah. So you're going to diet, uh, drinking too much, um, too much ca caffeine, carrying too much weight. Uh, so things have got to change. So I, I'm pleased that I'm on the right track now. Uh, hopefully, anyway, and I've got to go and see the doctors again in a couple of weeks. Um, check my blood pressure again. I bought myself a monitor so I can regulate that. I can check that and it, it, it has dropped. I'm still high, but it's just over amber into height rather than uh, very high now. But if I don't change my lifestyle, it will go back up high very quickly. But one good thing, I suppose, that I'm very active. Uh, I've got quite an active job and being as landscape photographers, you know, we do put in an awful lot of miles. So I think as long as I can control my diet and my calorie intake, I think I can reduce my weight fairly easily because of the hobby and the job that I do. And over the last kind of week, week or so, because I've been off this week, um, I've been doing a, a few local walks, which are really nice. And there's a couple of walks that I've been doing that are eight miles, which is fairly close to my daily average anyway but I didn't want to be off and then not do anything so I've been going on these walks and uh, the, the, the first time I went I went in kind of daylight and it was a little bit misty and that's where I managed to get the photos from and then the second time I went which was a couple of days ago I went out before sunrise and the the route takes you um, through a, a golf course and during the day all the pathways, they're not marked, but they're obvious that you can find them, obviously, because they, all the grass has been worn and you can see the paths in front of you. Well, when I left the other day in darkness, I got totally lost. I reckon I probably did 18 holes of golf before I even made my way out onto the road before I actually started the walk in earnest. Now, the first time I did this walk, I just went in a pair of hiking shoes but it is incredibly muddy so the second time I went I wore my muck boots that you can see behind me and I also took my hiking shoes with me because I thought well there's no way I can do eight miles uh, in them boots but I did um, and it was uh, and they're heavy but it was so comfortable um, I couldn't believe I'd, I'd done eight miles in them boots. And in fact, I've done the walk again since. Actually, I've done that walk three times. So once in my hiking shoes and twice just in their muck boots. And um, yeah, what a, what a great surprise, you know, to slosh all the way through the mud and um, be comfortable at the same time. But as I say, the walks, it's a lovely walk because it, it, it kind of takes you through this very kind of muddy path. But then I, I came to my first photographic opportunity which was a, a gate and at the time there was some mist in the distance um, and, I, and I kind of framed up there was a, I would have liked a little bit more mist but you know beggars can't be choosers and, and so I, I managed to get that shot on my daily walk which I thought was was quite nice and then you move out of that little grouping of trees or that pathway of trees and you can see why we're one of the counties in the area with big skies, you know, because we are so flat, Cambridgeshire, Norfolk and Suffolk. Um, and then I ended up at the village where, in fact, I used to, used to live in. And then that takes you down past over the railway line. And then eventually then you come up actually onto the river. And from that point, you're heading back towards the cathedral. So that's really nice to see like that, this beautiful cathedral in the distance, knowing that it's home as well, and you're walking towards it, seeing the cathedral kind of getting bigger and bigger ever so slowly. But along that walk, there was uh, a bend in the river. And as I say, this was the first time that I went, and uh, it was still very misty. And I, I really like this composition. There was two trees uh, in the image with a barge that's kind of permanently moored on the left hand side and on the opposite bank there was uh, a few walkers and a few joggers not all together just over the period of kind of half an hour or so they was coming by and I took an image without the cyclists and an image with the cyclists and I actually 
prefer the image with the cyclists in in the distance a little bit. I just think it adds uh, a little bit extra to this image. And considering I wasn't expecting a great deal, that was a real bonus to get that, that photo. But the last time that I, that I did this walk, I got to exactly that point uh, on, on the walk and my phone went and there was a, a parcel being delivered for, for Helen. It was her new mobile phone. And the parcel was being delivered between 9.35 to 10.35 and I thought sod's law it will come at 9.35 and I still had about three miles left on this walk um, with about 50 minutes or an hour so I really had to put my foot down in them wellies to try and make it back for 9.35 and I only just made it. Man, I'm out of breath. That was a real route march. And the time now is 9.30. And I've still got about five minutes to get home. My worst nightmare would be to get 50, 100 yards from my house and see the delivery driver just getting back in his van and shooting off. There's a, a DPD. <laughs> um, van pulling up. Oh, crikey. Do you know what I think that is? Oh, my goodness. Look at that. But anyway, let's move on to new gear and the gear that I sold in order to make way for this new gear. Right, so. As I said, I am a stickler for the rules. And I don't want to touch on this too much because I have covered this in a, another video. Um, but as you know, if you follow my channel, I was meant to go on a hike last October after waiting since February to do it. So I wanted the COVID numbers to come down. I wanted everyone to feel safe and secure, all the locals. And when I made my return, when I made my plans to return to Snowdonia, uh, the COVID numbers were bumping kind of quite nicely along the bottom of the graph, you know, so I thought, right, now's the time. Long story short, that trip got cancelled because we started to, to go up again. Um, but just before Christmas, I wanted something to look forward to in 2021. So I started to plan some trips to the Lake District. And I'm quite envious of James Burns. Um, who does a, a lot of the Wainwrights. In fact, he should have completed them, I think, last year. But because of what's happened, he's put it on the back burner. But I wanted to do all 30 Wainwrights in the southern fells of the Lake District because I like that area anyway. And so I knew that I had to make some changes um, to my equipment if I was going to be able to do this because I didn't want to get to the summit and that was my ultimate aim. That's not why I want to do these hikes. I want to do these hikes because I want to, I want to enjoy the landscape. I want to enjoy the conditions. I want to enjoy just kind of being out there in nature and experiencing everything that goes along with it. The different patterns as the clouds move across the, uh, the, the fells, kind of that feeling uh, that you get that only a really good hike can bring. And I didn't want to spoil all that by turning myself into a pack mule. I had to, I had to put things on a set of imaginary scales and think, what do I want? Do I want to take or possibly take some fantastic photos and have loads of different pieces of glass with me and big heavy tripods? Or do I want to enjoy the hike and travel light? And that won every time. So I thought, right, what can I do? So the first thing I had to do was I had to retire the Whistler rucksack that you can see in the background there. Um, it's a superb rucksack, I'm not going to lie. The waterproofing on that is, is second to none in my opinion. Um, 
but it's just so uncomfortable. Very heavy and uncomfortable. So I already own an Osprey rucksack. And so I started looking at the Osprey range. And what I found was, I found this, which is the Farpoint Trek 55 rucksack. And what I liked about this is that it didn't open from the top like traditional rucksacks. It actually opens like a traditional camera bag. And so I can get to everything from in here, a huge kind of surface area that I can look down on. Now this rucksack isn't waterproof. It does come with a rain cover, which you can just throw over the top. But I wanted some, one, I wanted some additional weatherproofing. And also I wanted the camera, the camera bag to be organized. So what I did, I bought these two cubes from Peak Design. And I bought the small cube, which is half the size of a medium cube. And then you can also buy the large cube, which is the same size as the small and the medium put together. But for me, this worked an absolute treat. I've also got this small f-stop bag here, um, which is hardly anything in there at the moment. It just fits in there really nicely. And there's a first aid kit in there at the moment. And then there's a big um, empty space where perhaps I can put sandwiches or something like that, you know. Um, but yeah, this feels like really organized now. And I've, I've actually got space in the medium cube for three lenses if I want to take three lenses which I, I'll, I'll never will but there's 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 space for as I say three lenses uh, my, my filters my uh, cleaning equipment my batteries uh, yeah, cloths oh, all various stuff but this what I liked about this is that I could just take this out and if I want to if I just want to go on a a non-photography walk, say with, with Helen, I can throw that into a small rucksack like that. Because we know that when we open up our camera bag, our hand is already going to the area where we keep things in before we even focus with our eyes, because we know it's always organized, isn't it, our camera stuff. We always know where to, where to look. And so I just thought if I've got this in this bag, I can transfer this to any bag and I will just know that I've got everything. I've not robbed Peter to pay Paul from a different bag and they think, oh, I didn't put that in, you know. So um, that, was my, that was my train of thought. And this bag is just so comfortable. I think with the inserts, there's not a huge amount of weight difference. It's probably about a pound lighter than the, um, than the Whistler, but the design it's just so much better. You know, it is a, 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 a bag that's made for hikers, by hikers. They've put so much attention into their products over the years. The belt just feels really nice around the hips. There's no weight on the shoulders anymore. So even though the weight is similar to the Whistler, the design is just totally different. So that was the first thing that I, I changed. I needed to make my, my backpack a lot more comfortable. So, what did I sell? Well, make sure I'm still in focus. I sold my 100 to 400 G Master lens, which was probably the best lens that I owned. Um, but it was heavy incredibly heavy and I wasn't using it it was a it was the most expensive piece of glass that I owned that was just collecting dust and it took me a long time I didn't make this decision overnight it's probably about three or four weeks in really thinking about it and researching and, and looking at things to make this decision but when I do the wildlife I always take the 200 to 600 always and something else that I sold was my recently purchased 
really right stuff BH55 ball head. <laughs> Which sounds crazy to sell two amazing pieces uh, of equipment. But when I weighed the 100 to 400, I weighed that in at 3.9 pound. That was with the lens hood and the foot, which is what always stays on that lens. When I looked on the website, their weights were not as heavy as my 3.9 pound. So I don't know if they weighed that lens without the foot, without the lens hood, I'm not too sure, but I weighed it twice on two different uh, weighing scales. And they was both coming out at 3.9 pound each time. The ball head, the really right stuff ball head, screwed onto the Manfrotto tripod, was coming out at six pound. So just them two items was 10 pound. It's a lot of weight right there. So, what did I buy? I bought, I bought the 70 to 200 to replace the 100 to 400. Now, I already own the, a really old Canon version of this. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I loved the versatility. But moreover, I love the weight, or I should say lack of weight with these lenses. This is weighing in at two pound, which is obviously half the weight of the 100 to 400. Obviously it doesn't have the reach. I understand that, but as I said, I needed to make compromises if I'm gonna do these hikes. Something else that I bought to replace the ball head or to work in conjunction with this as I bought a Gitzo Traveller Gitzo Series 1 Traveller I believe it's called um, and this is weighing in at three pound so straight away I've I've gained five pound from taking that tripod and the 100 to 400. Gained five pound, lost five pound. Um, saved five pound. Now, if I'm doing uh, a, a peak that's probably, let's say 500 meters, I will probably still take the Manfrotto with the Manfrotto ball head that's currently on there. But if I'm doing a hike that's perhaps 500 meters up to a thousand meters then I will take this small gitzo because of the weight saving. I actually contemplated in not taking a tripod. When I weighed that in I thought oh, can I do without a tripod? Can I go handheld? But if you guys obviously watch my channel on a regular basis you know that I feel a lot more comfortable on a tripod. I take better photos on a tripod. Um, I, my handheld is not my strong point. I like to I like to frame everything up. I like to check it. I like to check the histogram. I like to check the focus. I like to take a photo on the point that I focused on. Review that. Bring that back up. Check it. Tweak it if need be. I just love a tripod. And so I thought this tripod here would be a great compromise, and it would certainly be better than not having a tripod at all. So that was the two um, items that I actually bought. And there was another reason for this as well. And that was because, there's the 24 to 105. This lens here, this is a 16 to 35 G Master, and this is an amazing lens, 2.8. And whenever I go hiking, this lens always gets left behind, which is such a shame um, because I only take two lenses. I just can't warrant uh, having three lenses going up such a high elevation. And this is a lens that I want to use more and more going into 2021. And I realised that if I kept 
the 100 to 400, there is a huge gap missing between 35 and 100. And that's why the gap is closed a lot more between 35 and 70. There is not a lot missing there and I'm sure I can make it work. So that was a, another reason as well. Because I always took with me, wherever I want, when I took the 24 to 105. And this is a lovely lens, but I really want to start using that 16 to 35. So yeah, I weighed everything up and the real deciding factor was that I took my 100 to 400 and I took the ball head to wex and we've done a bit of a deal and basically I picked these two up and not a penny changed hands. I walked in with the two items and I walked out with these two new items and that was it. It was as simple as that. So that was another reason as well for me to make this uh, switch. It didn't cost me a penny. Perhaps I'm trying to justify these reasons to myself, I don't know. But in my mind it works, on paper it works, financially kind of worked. I just hope it works in practice now. But if for some strange reason that I hugely regret selling that 100 to 400, then who knows, in a year, 18 months time, I might buy it back second hand, who knows. Anyway, let's talk about different for, uh, feed that I've now got in the garden and this is all thanks to you guys. So, you guys have been telling me to move over to Sunflower Hearts for quite some time and I finally did it. And if you can see in here, there's probably about two inches that's gone down, that, that, that the feed has gone down. And not only here, we've got another one of these closer to the house and that's dropped by the same amount. And this is about a week and a half now uh, that this level has dropped. Now before I had mixed seeds in here and that hardly went down at all. And I see so many birds off of here, you know, like the, the, the blue tits and the, and the great tits are on here all the time. So it's so nice. So thank you ever so much for recommending this. And uh, sorry it took me so long to take you up on your advice, but I can assure you from here on in, this will be uh, one of my, uh, one of the seeds that I buy on a regular basis. And just recently, it, the garden's been, it's been so active, it's been so nice. I've had blue tits, great tits, long-tailed tits in the garden. We had a, a thrush in here the other day. We do get them, but not on a, on a daily basis. They do kind of come and go, but it was really nice to see a, a thrush in the garden the other day for quite some time. Um, and obviously I've got the blackbirds, the, the collared doves are, are, are back. Um, we obviously get kind of quite a few pigeons in the garden and obviously our, our favourite robins. And what's nice at the moment is I fitted a bird box in the tree, which is south facing. Um, and I said when I made that particular video that I don't know if the location of that bird box is going to be the best, but um, the birds hang around that tree an awful lot. And the other day when I was sitting here, the robin was actually inside that bird box. Oh, so I'm really hoping that he does start looking at that for a possible nesting site come spring. That would be so cool if I can see a robin from here. Anyway, very quickly, let me talk to you about the webcam that I've bought for the, uh, the blue tip bird box. Now I did say on my last video that I was going to make uh, a dedicated video about that and I've not done that up to now because I'm having a few problems and I didn't want to make a video until I've got these problems ironed out or what I'm saying is correct. I don't want to jump in too quickly and say this particular webcam oh it's absolutely fantastic you should go out and buy them if I've not done my research 
and then with these teething problems, I don't want to say, oh, you know, I'm not enjoying it, don't get that one, if we've not had a chance to iron these problems out. But basically what's happening, the, the footage, when it's dark, it's black and white, and the footage is quite clear. Um, but then what happens when it gets triggered by motion detector, the footage goes from black and white to completely black, and then when it comes back on, it's this horrible magenta colour, and it's losing its definition in video quality. And I played around with the app uh, for, for a while to try and get some settings to, to work differently, but the app is a third-party app. It's not native to the manufacturer. They are working on that, by the way. Um, so I, I sent them an email, and, and, and the suppliers, manufacturers, they may be the same people, incredibly supportive, really good customer care, uh, and they seem to think that it's possibly a faulty camera. And they've said to me, just send it back, and we will give you a new camera. Um, I asked them if they could send me the new camera and then I would send the old one back and they said that's not their company policy, which I respect. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to buy another camera and then when it arrives I will take the bird box down, take the old one out, install the new one uh, and then send the old one back for a credit or, or a refund. I just don't want to keep taking that bird box up and down if I can really help it. So. Once I've done that, once I've got the, bird back, uh, the webcam back, and after two or three, four weeks, when I know that it's working and I've ironed out all the problems, then uh, I'll perhaps do a, a video on that. But at the, at the moment, I'm, I'm not going to be doing it. So that comes on to this pergola, pergola, whatever we call it under here. And this is where I started my wildlife photography from and this area when I look back over the years it has served us so well and uh, you know I don't know I'm going back now perhaps let's say eight years ago this was so full of life under here we used to have friends over for barbecues and we used to be sitting out here till late with the music playing and chatting and Oh, I just we, we just loved it. It was it was the place to kind of almost entertain like, during the summer months, and because it's got the roof on it, you know, we felt protected if it started to rain a little bit. And as the kids got a little bit older, um, they started to drift away, and then me and Helen started to holiday more than stay in the house, and it kind of got a little bit neglected. This. Uh, but I think because 2020 has brought us back closer to the house because travel restrictions, we was down here the other day and we just thought, you know what, let's kind of resurrect the feelings that we had all them years ago and get this prepared again for when we can mix again, when we can have our friends and family over and fire up the barbecue again. So what I did was I put these string lights around here, these festoon lights. And they was only like 20 pound a set. And I've got three sets up so far. I've got one more set due to be delivered, which will finish off um, that joist over there. And that gives me some lights up here. We've got some candles around here. Helen's gonna make some more because she's really good at art and craft. And we're gonna buy a, a sofa with a nice table in the middle and get ourselves a, a new barbecue get a few kind of ornaments up, a few shelves. I just make it feel really homely. You know, I think we've we've just kind of missed having, like, you know, friends and family. I think 2020 has, has really kind of taught us kind of, you know, how much we do miss people and how much we take people for granted. So we want to resurrect the feeling from under here that we had all of those years ago before we took it for granted. And also I'm going to be using this for my wildlife photography. I might get a, a, perhaps a netting up here because before I had some horrible black plastic, uh, I might just buy some, some mesh netting hung over there so I'm a little bit more camouflaged and uh, use it for, for my photography as well. So yeah, I can't wait to 
to resurrect the feeling from under here that we had from all those years ago and hopefully have everybody round either in the summer or autumn this year. Anyway, I'm going to say thank you ever so much for watching. If you stuck with this video to the end, you guys are absolute stars. But until my next video, be kind and stay safe.